Welcome to the Dave Palma Show, the podcast that revives, restores, and awakens your innermost capabilities. You have the training and the talent to succeed, but do you have the guts to fail? I love what I do. When you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. Find your path to success through the journey of those who have succeeded. And now, your host, Dave Palma. Hi, welcome, welcome back to the Dave Palmer Show. And with me in this episode, I have uh, some, I will be speaking to a renowned facil- facilitator and best selling author whose work has been praised by the Nobel Peace Prize winners, um, Nelson Mandela and Juan Man- Manuel Santos. He urges that even lifelong opponents and groups of people across multiple organizations, including those who don't agree or like or even trust each other, can reach a critical aha moment and move forward together. Adam Kahane, welcome to the Dave Palmer Show. Thanks, Dave. I'm happy to be with you. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite uh, interesting uh, work you're doing, and it is quite interesting that people you don't like, uh, you can work together with them. I mean, I know. Um, I mean, for me, I can relate to what happened in America. It's polarized, obviously. You know, so your work is very, very, very relevant. What was going in? you know, in the States, which, which is where you're from, isn't it? So No, 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 I'm from, from Canada. Canada. I'm calling you ah, from okay. Montreal. I always, I always make that mistake. <laughs> yeah, you're from France, That's, right? Uh, yeah. I'm from France. Well, actually, my dad's from Mauritius, but it's a French speaking, like, well, okay. <laughs> Creole. <laughs> good, good, good. It's like saying, you know, are you from Nigeria? Well, actually, my parents are from <laughs> the Caribbean, but maybe originally from Ghana, you know. <laughs> Okay, that's great. That's great. Well, we've obviously obviously got a debate going already. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, with what was going on in America, not your country now, um, it's polarised and obviously more closer to you than yeah. me in the, in yeah. the UK. Um, so obviously, your work is quite relevant. I mean, why would I want to sit next to, I don't know, um, the Ku Klux Klan and say, yeah, let's work together? Well, um, so... Uh, you don't have to, and you may not want to, and it may be that you can uh, get where you're trying to go uh, just with your with your friends and colleagues. So if you can uh, get get what you're trying to get done on your own or just with people you like, then go for it. But I'm interested yeah. in the cases where we wish that was so, but it isn't, and we have to work with people that we we may not agree with or like or trust uh, because that's the only where way that we can make progress on what we're trying to make progress on. And um, I do notice that people often respond to this by going to the most extreme examples, like, surely you're not suggesting we should have collaborated with Hitler. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, um, I do have some experience in extreme examples, but in a way, I think starting there it just makes the whole conversation a little bit... Um, uh, yeah, extreme. There's lots of cases, not just in the U.S., but also in Canada, in the U.K., uh, yeah. in many other places where polarization is increasing, and 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 therefore it's getting harder to make progress uh, on anything. And those are those are the cases that I'm interested in. Right. Okay. Okay. So, can you can you tell us more about the, the cases that you are interested in? What what um. Yeah. What well, cases are they? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm noticing there's lots of situations uh, in workplaces, in communities, in countries globally, where yeah. um, we're stuck, and whether that's on huge things like climate change or or um, or Brexit or yeah uh, or um, relations with our neighbors or um, getting things done with our colleagues, where uh, people dig in and say, uh, no, it's not just that you have a difference of opinion. It's not just that I disagree with you. You're a bad person or actually you're yeah. the devil. And how, how could I work with the devil? <laughs> so, so, so that's what I'm noticing is increasing stuckness. Uh, and my question is, what do we do when we find ourselves in those situations? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I know with workplace stuff, and I got involved with trade unions, and even myself, you know, to sort of deal with other people's grievances as well as you know, deal with stuff for myself and um and you know wider societal political issues as well. Got involved with, but um, I can see I see what you mean about neighbours and um uh you know some kind of like Brexit kind of issues, and they both. I mean. A recent issue, obviously with Brexit, it's the Northern Ireland border that's really like, let's work together because we yeah. Yeah, really did make the, the Good Friday kind of agreement, yeah. you know. So that's kind of what you're talking about, isn't it? It's, 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 it's a sticking point still for, for Brexit. There's still kind of, you know, Joe Biden, he's, he's Irish descent. He, he's still kind of like saying, yeah, well, you know, I don't know if I should make a trade deal with the UK because of the administration, you know, because of the... Um, well, I mean, I... I watch Brexit from afar and notice the 50-50 split in the country. And I notice um, in many countries this increasing and dangerous polarization around COVID measures. Um, yes, that, that is another one. Uh, so when you say dangerous, yeah. you mean you're obviously uh, saying, well, actually, people should take the vaccine. But I mean, I had a conversation with someone today about this. Um, and I've um, before you, I did a, a interview with a doctor. She's from Sri Lanka, but she's she was a doctor or was a doctor in in France. Mm -hmm. But she's telling she's saying don't take the vaccine because it, it it's not you know researched properly. Yeah, well, I'm. I mean, I that's not my understanding. But I wasn't I wasn't um, right now getting into a, an argument about yeah. whether people should take the vaccine. But what I notice is. The polarization and the and the disagreement is creating the result that we that um, that it's very difficult to deal with this issue, and uh, right. and to find productive solutions, whether it's to uh, trade or COVID or uh, or global warming or um, relations in in neighborhoods, and so. What, what I've been trying to do for 30 years um, is find ways to help people work together across yeah. across diversity and difference. Okay, so how do you do that then? Um, well, I guess the first choice is the very f is to answer the question you asked right at the beginning: Do I need to work with these people? I mean, maybe I yeah. maybe I can. Um, achieve what I'm trying to achieve or get where I'm trying to go uh, just with mm -hmm. my my mates. But um, what if I find that I can't and I'm stuck? And so uh, my experience is that, uh, yeah, um, setting up a situation where I can at least, where I can start by hearing from where other people are coming from, as I guess you did with this Sri Lankan doctor you referred to. Yeah. Um, that's the starting point. Of, rather than me just trying to give my point of view uh, over and over, and I'm not really listening to you, I'm just waiting for your mouth to stop moving so that I can go back to telling you the truth about the way things are. How can I get beyond yeah. that? And, and um, yeah, here how you see things, where you're coming from, and can we find ways to move forward, maybe because we found we agree, or even though we still disagree, are there things we can do uh, to deal with a situation we're both concerned about? Right, yeah, okay. Uh, I suppose really um, that is, I mean, if I got involved with if I go back to my trade union days when I was a firefighter, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, a trade union seems to be a dirty word to things like high level management and, you know, HR when they don't like things, you know, getting <laughs> kind of disruptive, disruptive, you know, like striking. Um, but basically it's a representative body. Yeah. Um, so, but we did sit down and with, say, the chief fire officer and, and you know, even the government or, or a representative of the government, you know, or for that, like, say, for London, you know, um, looking after the fire department or something like that, you know, to solve certain issues, whether it's internal or, or external. 
we could, we could bring it relevant. I suppose an analogy could be a lot of doctors, they, they were threatening, I think, including the UK, the consultants are now um, snowed under with a lot of backlogs of, of cases, you know, of, of um, re routine, like hip replacement, things like that, because they got held back because of lockdown. Mm. And they can't deal with it. And they're, what they're saying is, look, we don't want to work extra hours. I know that was being said, and I think the word strike did come out, yeah. but <laughs> I don't know if doctors ever gone on strike. But you, what you, what, in that situation, what you're saying is, look, sit down. Rather than saying, I'm not going to work at extra hours, and this is really, you know, piled up and pointing the finger to the government, you know, as unions and representative bodies do. I think this in, in this case, it was the British Medical Association for, for the UK. What would you say should be done in that situation rather than saying, I'm not going to do the extra hours to get rid of this backlog. Well, let, what would you say should be done? Uh, let, let me go back to how I started in this work, which was almost exactly 30 years ago this month. I was actually living in London at the time. I used to work for Shell a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. I know and, so. uh, yeah. And there was a group of um, politicians and activists and trade unionists in South Africa who wanted to use a particular shell strategic planning methodology to think about the transition from apartheid to democracy. This was in 1990. Right, yeah, I remember that well. Um, That's right, yeah. Uh, I just joined the fire service in 1990. Yeah, so you remember that <laughs> Nelson Mandela was really yeah, in presence. Uh, before prison. that, yeah, before that, I was obviously protesting, yeah. <laughs> you know, with, I remembered all the, um, yeah. you know, the no, issues around I remember, around that. Uh, I remember yeah. that in London. Mandela was released from prison in 1990, and the first all-race elections were till, weren't till 1994. And I got involved. Yeah, and Maggie Thatcher stood yeah. down. <laughs> I got involved uh, in 1991 with this um, amazing group of people in South Africa, black and white, opposition and establishment, yeah. left and right, men and women, uh, trade unionists, politicians, business people, community leaders. And this really blew me away that these people who had been fighting each other for, for decades, if not centuries, were able to meet and talk and not necessarily agree on everything, but have ideas uh, and do things to try to make things better. So anyhow, this really blew me away. I ended up resigning from Shell and, and oh, leaving yeah. London and moving to South Africa and marrying the project organizer. What was your actual position there then, as a facilitator or was you in management? Uh, no, I was in the strategic planning department of Shell, um, oh, yes, which in Shell meant yeah. facilitating, facilitating um, meetings of managers. And that's how I went to oh, South okay. Africa as a facilitator. And when I left Shell, I started right, doing out. that work full time. But the thing I noticed when I got to, to South Africa, when I had moved to South Africa and started doing this work full time, is that the people who really knew how to do this, for, who, for whom this was in their blood, were people from the trade union movement uh, or who had been involved in trade union negotiations or from community organizing. Um, so, this idea, uh, so I think the example you gave from the fire service is a good one, because this is a yeah. clear situation where, yes, we have different interests, yes, we may not agree, yes, we may not e even like each other, but we <laughs> we have to figure out to make things a way to make things work, because this is the work we do, and this is the jobs we have, and this is what we're trying to get done, like fires. So I actually think yes, yeah. there's a lot to learn from those trade union management situations. And those are often the people who really, who really know how to do this. It's uh, uh, politicians and trade unionists uh, know that, hey, I may not agree with this person, but we've got to figure out how to, how to make progress. So, so to take the example you gave, I'm not saying that people should never strike or threaten to strike. I'm just saying eventually, yeah. Uh, what's almost always required is to find a way to sit down and work things out. And that approach of, okay, how are we going to move forward together stands in contrast to this situation of increasing polarization and demonization that we see in the world. So my work as a facilitator the last 30 years has yeah. been, how do I support people who, who need to work together whether or not they really want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember Maggie Thatcher actually calling Nelson Mandela a terrorist before, you know, 
um, while he was still in, I think it was the 1980s yeah. actually, you know, when the Free Mandela yeah. <laughs> song and everything came out. And also um, when the fire service, when I was a firefighter, um, we went on strike in 2002 and then they suddenly pulled out some, uh, the, the newspapers, the really, you know, I think one of them's um, sort of got, they got rid of them. The government had to say, no, they had to go to the news of the world, but the sun, the news of the world started pulling pictures out of the fire brigade union saying, yeah, okay, here, here, here they are in Iraq, you know, fraternizing with terrorists and, and stuff like that. But what the point I'm making is that um, sadly over the weekend or just, just Friday, someone was stabbed to death and it's, it was deemed a terrorist attack, a, a politician from the conservative, which is the more yeah. right-winged side of, uh, rather than Labour. Um, and, um, of course, you know, rightly so, even the, my trade union, you know, um, uh, the leader there said, right, we've all got to come together. This is a terrible atrocity, you know, uh, even though they, the fingers are pointed at FBU as being terrorists, which obviously it's not true, but you know, that, that they tend to look at left leaning like that left, left wing leaning. Um, and what the question was that what I want to sit around the table is how can we make it more safer for politicians to have their kind of meetings with their constituents, you know, with the local people they represent, you know, do we need police officers? Do we need armed guards there? Like some countries do, you know, um, and every single, you know, trade union, uh, labor party, conservative, they all are asking the same question and, and agreeing with it, but it's sitting down and is that the kind of thing where you, you could facilitate that? where parties would say, or is that just a good example where you could come together? Because, you know, there could be some arguments politically where people are coming from, why this it's led to that. Yeah. Um, five years ago, it was the opposite. It was yeah, a white yeah. supremacist, if you like, that stabbed to, get, stabbed to death a Labour over Brexit yeah, yeah, five years that. ago, an MP. Yeah. yeah. So this time it's kind of more, you know, where uh, for FBU has gone and sort of given support for Palestine and stuff like that, and it's more yeah. Middle East leaning. Yeah. Well, I noticed that, uh, and I, uh, it is uh, shocking, and we've had incidents like that uh, in Canada as well. Um, yeah. And France as well. Quite, it's got quite a lot of few. So um, th this is what uh, this is what worries me. Uh, is this this increasing uh not just disagreement there's always there's always going to be different points of view and disagreements and conflicts but when it gets to the stage where as i said before it's not just that i disagree with you i think you're wrong and it's not just that i think you're wrong i think you're the devil and what what do i need to do with the devil i need to kill them uh, so, so that it's that, <laughs> it's that quick escalation. Um, and yeah. I'm not convinced that, uh, that simply, um, having more police and cracking down more and going to war more is going to solve the problem. So I'm, wh what I'm trying to do in my work and in this book is to show that it is possible. It's not, uh, it's not straightforward. It's not easy. It's not foolproof. But it is possible to work things out, um, yeah, with people who are different than you, with people who you disagree with, uh, with people who you may like. And whether that's in a trade, the, the example you gave, the trade union setting, is a good example because it's been going on for so long and it's so straightforward. We, we don't like management, but we have, to, we have to find a way to make a deal at the end of the day. Um, yeah, that's and right. uh, similarly. Yeah. yeah, so the the extreme example or the big example is the meeting uh, in Glasgow uh, in November about climate change. Uh, we can we can all spend that meeting talking about those other people and the bad things they're doing and uh, the countries in the north that burned a lot of coal in industrializing or the oil companies or the Saudis or, or whatever. Um, yeah. uh, but that's actually not going to get us, uh, um, to, uh, enable us to make progress in solving this problem. So this is the, the biggest example of the need to move forward together, even with people 
we may not agree with or like or trust. And there's been some good progress made in the past in the Paris agreements uh, uh, six years ago, but it's not enough and we have to do more. So, so um, I, I think that the, those are the two sides of it. The, the demonization on the one hand that led to the stabbing yeah. you referred to and the need to work together um, yes. that's on the biggest scale uh, what's coming up at the climate at the the global climate change conference and everything in between so that yeah. that's what that's what i'm what I, what i'm on about is those are the two choices demonization or collaboration yeah yeah no that's quite interesting it'd be interesting to see because i mean obviously the, the the political um kind of view on climate change changed since your recent uh president i'm oh, sorry not yours <laughs> i did it again <laughs> since america's recent president your president's fine about that actually i think he's a bit more uh, agreeable with, with the climate and you've had some issues in in, in canada yes yeah, some wildfires going on uh, recently as well there so um, and and in the europe in in greece but how would you facilitate this situation if donald trump was still president and xi jinping was also a meeting, say at a United Nations meeting, a very serious one, because now that this wildfires killed millions, you know, you know, homes have just gone wiped across the whole, you know, celebrities in Malibu and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then they so said they're having this meeting now, and um, you know, um, everyone's there in from Europe. Uh, I forgot her name now. The Chancellor, she's she's, I think she's not Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. Yeah. You know, um, and if it's to do with uh, wildfires um, in this particular situation, you know, the biggest leaders from, you know, yeah. trade union fires, you know, yeah. internationally known, uh, sitting around this meeting, how would you facilitate that? Because they were definitely, especially with Donald Trump there, and Xi Jinping is kind of like, oh, well, I'm doing it, but obviously they're a bigger, uh, just as big as America with, with uh, pollution and yeah. climate sort of violations. How well, would you facilitate that meeting? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an important example. Uh, it's an it's a it's a important example, and it's a difficult example. Um, so, um, because uh, this is a situation where the two sides or the the different sides don't at all see eye to eye, and none of them can solve this problem just going off on their own. And there yeah. have been climate disasters as you said, in the US, in Germany, uh, in China, and they're getting more yeah. and more every year. Australia, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Canada, everywhere. And, yeah. Um, and so, you know, that the uh, it's not hypothetical. There are people, diplomats, others, trying to facilitate um, agreement on this and, uh, and progress uh, is being made um, in in finding thing finding things that everybody can get behind the the challenge is on the one hand yes we can very slowly make progress bit by bit a little agreement here a little agreement there but meanwhile the problem is just get it is getting worse faster and faster so uh, you know you're you're presenting the the most difficult case in the world. And the only point I'm making here is that that dynamic, uh, which can be seen so starkly at the, at the global scale, looking at climate change, can also be seen um, uh, nationally in the example you gave of the, the, um, the MP being stabbed and can yeah. be seen locally in particular neighborhoods and can be seen in particular workplaces as you are recalling from your from your Please. firefighter days. Yeah. And yeah. so the the basic point I'm trying to make in in what I'm doing and what I'm writing about is um, this this lazy uh, answer well I could never work with those people. Uh, you know, they're just beyond the pale. They're just Ku Klux Klan. Um, yeah, I could never deal with them. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, uh, stick with my people and try to beat them. Well, maybe that'll work, <laughs> but uh, but but maybe it won't. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely uh, much different to teams rivalry against each other as in sports, you know, yeah. or, or 
Um, and then when you work in teams in, in organizations, you know, like the fire service or, you know, hospitals and shell, you know, yeah, there's various teams. It, it's more of a collaboration. There's no kind of rivalry in that set. Well, maybe a fun kind of, oh, they're lucky for us, you know, you know, there's different watches, meaning, you know, my shift yeah. is people I work with all the time. And then there's another one that works, you know, and then we might have a little rivalry. We might even have a sporting football match or volleyball match, but we would yeah. also say, well, that's the watch that does this, you know, but we do this better, you know, yeah. in, a, in a fun way, you know. Yeah. But so I like that. I like that example. And yeah, that's, that's what we need. We're, we're not the same. We're, uh, we may be different. We may have different identities. We may root for different teams. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I've never been a firefighter, but I suppose that most of the time, or at least we hope most of the time, we've got each other's backs because That's otherwise right, yeah. we won't survive. And well, so that 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 fire station dynamic is what mm. we also need uh, in these larger settings. I think that's a that's a great way of putting it. How can we get what you experienced on on good days? I suppose there were also bad days with conflicts amongst you but on good days right, how yeah. can we get that uh nationally and globally yeah i mean a really really um, bad case would be a manager you know that sits in the fire truck but we call him uh, uh the watch manager or yeah. a station officer in london but uh, you call them captains in yeah. in in Canada and US, but uh, I got it right this time. <laughs> You're getting there. there. There could be a captain who's totally yeah. against the trade union, and it's very heavily trade unionized, like yeah. the teachers' union. You know, it's it's really heavily. So now, sometimes when uh, you need to do overtime, meaning someone, you know, you need to, uh, someone from another shift to cover, he might be against that captain who's, who just doesn't like the trade unions and wants to go right up the ladder to chief and and says the wrong things, you know, to to really get pe people's backs up. And yet they have to work together, you know, yeah. and it, it, you could be on that same team and that captain could be, you know, upsetting a lot of the, the team, but that happens in sports as well, actually. Yeah. So, so how I, would you deal with that situation? Well, I mean, I think the, I'm finding a lot of um, wisdom in the examples you're giving. Yeah. And it's I, any, any organization, yeah. by the way, this could happen. Yeah. So I think the first thing to realize is that, um, these differences of position or affiliation or identity or personality uh, yeah. or, or, or rank or race or whatever, they're always there. So yeah. um, let's not live in a fantasy world where we're, we're, all, we're all one. We're not all one, we're, we're many. So that's a, fact, yeah. that's a fact of life. It can be fun, it can be uh, um, grueling, but it's a fact of life. And, and uh, we have to, most of the time, we have to find a way to work things out because we can't just each do our own thing. We certainly can't in a fire brigade. Uh, yeah. uh, and so that, that, I, that for me is the starting point. Recognize that it's always like this and um, um, in all of the ways that, that you learned at the time, we have to find a way to make our way forward, even with people who uh, we want to roll our eyes about or, or, uh, or yell at. Um, uh, but we don't have the choice of saying, uh, 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 to hell with you, I'm going off on my own. Uh, yeah, that's right. You can't do that in a fire. <laughs> uh, no, exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's such much, a beautiful you might not example. Like the other person. And I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm really struck by the, the similarity between your fire station example and the climate change induced fires. Uh, that yeah, are, yeah. Uh, that are well, it's just my energy that I can use, but you know, yeah, in an operation theater with doctors and nurses, if, if they've had a conflict, you know, for whatever reason, that does happen as well yeah. when they're working together. Yeah. Um, you can't walk off and leave that person you're operating on <laughs> even if you're arguing about what you should give them and things like that oh no you can't do that like, you know, yeah and that's why could be something like that that's why the example you gave at the beginning of the conversation about about covid is so yeah uh distressing to me because um the backlog uh, of work well doctors yeah. and other and nurses and other healthcare workers are under tremendous pressure 
And yeah. we're seeing, All kinds I don't know, in the UK, but certainly in parts of, in other parts of the world, this increasing separation, this polarization uh, over vaccines, over masks, et cetera. And people are yeah, saying, right, to hell yeah. with you, I'm just going to do what I want. Um, yeah, even in even medical in the medical profession, people are debating whether you know it's, it's a smaller mi minority, but it's probably twenty percent saying I'm not going to have the vaccine. And in fact, in the UK, they're saying well, they did come up with, "Well, oh, you're not going to you're not going to come to work tomorrow," almost, you know. But then they protested and said, "You can't do that," and you know, employment law came into it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But there is a debate, you know, and it, it, it's even well, as I said, I, I've interviewed this ex doctor now, but she wasn't, you know. I'm sure she just went into coaching and does her podcast as well now. So, but they just have their views as well. You know, there are doctors that do have differing views about medicine and how things should be approached as well, you know, internally. Hmm. I suppose going back to my um, example, because of the, you know, I know the work I do, um, there is this thing called the National Joint Committee where the, there's a, like a fire chief fire officers association that there's a voice for the chief and the, you know people that are higher up in management and there is the firefighters one the fire brigade union and then there is that national joint committee is also with the local governments that you know like say london birmingham will have a politician in charge of that so boris johnson was in charge he was a london mayor before this he was in charge of the london fire brigade and mm -hmm. the police so that committee is where you sit down, you have a meeting every year. So the trade union goes there, or the body for, you know, members from each, uh, all over the country, from London, Birmingham, you know, the chief fire officers from each brigade, you know, Sussex, you know, Gloucestershire, whatever, they all sit down from all over the country and work together a deal on policies that's been, you know, issues that's been brought up. So if there was a strike, that would be the NJC that will also be involved with saying, right, okay, we'll give you that pay then. We'll give it that pay and everything. Grievances are all mm -hmm. agreed with those three together. But that doesn't happen in the fire station. Like I told you, if you don't like that officer because he did X, Y, and Z, the NJC isn't there to sort that yeah. out. And they could actually be renegade against what's already been agreed as well. Yeah. So, um, of course, there's all... I mean, there's lots of ways of doing these things, and you've got uh, in the fire s station the the management procedures and the the different groups, and yeah. in uh, nationally or at the city level, you've got these committees, and that's all fine. I don't I'm, I don't know enough about those examples to know what's good or bad about those. But what yeah. I'm what I'm uh, uh, arguing in this book is that um, if we're going to figure things out together rather than just the boss telling everybody what to do or Boris Johnson telling everybody what to do, um, if we're going to figure things out together, uh, not just in big formal negotiations, but on an ongoing basis, then what's needed is more, uh, is, is what I'm calling facilitation, which is somebody, it doesn't have to be a professional facilitator, Somebody, yeah. a manager, a trade union leader, a member, a, a member of the team has to, or some people have to play this role of facilitating, which means their job is not to tell people what to do. Uh, their job is not to solve the problem on their own. Their job is to help the group work together to find a solution together. And that's yeah. what I discovered 30 years ago, e even in this extreme situation of apartheid South Africa, uh, can be done. And I've seen it now all over the world, uh, in the U.S. on politics, in Canada on, on uh, indigenous issues, um, uh, in the Netherlands on climate change issues. If, if some people can play this facilitating role then it is possible even for people who see things differently, who may not agree or like or trust each other, to find a way forward together. And that's that, That's what I'm on about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, two examples, again, only what I can relate to, but it can, like you say, you give you a shell example because you know you know about that situation where he was and mm. you know, what was going on, the political landscape, if you like. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of like not so subjective in it now. So, so I can talk about it and listen to, but an example of what you're saying is, is well, well, the first one's a strike. So the second one is about the riots, you know, during the race mm. kind of issues and, and, and during polarized America and, and it happened in the UK. Yeah. 
I'll talk about the UK situation in a minute, but with the, the strike that I was involved with in 2002, um, it, it kind of got to a deadlock. They just weren't agreeing. There's so many things that really got in the way of, of making a deal. It got confusing and even the firefighters got a kind of like um, faction, factionized, you know, and some said, no, I won't be picketing or we'll just stay inside because then now you're losing your pay. You know, it's like we're just relying on the donations and stuff like that, you know. So it really got nasty. And um, that's a situation where I think they may have actually brought a facilitator in, you know, because obviously the government said, oh, well, we're not going to do that. No, no. And, and I think in the end, there was a, a situation where it, it kind of got agreed because, you know, the, our, our trade union leader, if you like, the voice for the firefighters, if you like, <laughs> so-called voice, because um, he, you know, um, of the firefighters said to himself, we got shafted, meaning yeah. even our leader. Tell me like, this example of the race out. riots in, in the UK. Right, so the race riot, there was race example. riots in the UK, but it wasn't a really a race riot. It, it, it started off with a killing of a black guy in Tottenham in 2011 mm. and then it sparked a riot in Tottenham, North London. Mm. But what happened was there's riots going on everywhere, but those riots, cause you know, it, 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 the same in America, there was a little bit of looting and it was actually deliberately so they could take stuff. But in the UK, what happened in 2011 was the riots wasn't political. It was, we're going to have the riots cause we're, you know, we're in poverty and we're just going to make these rights so we can steal stuff from the shop that they could see. And they was organizing it with their, at the time it was a Blackberry phone, but anything that's encrypted, you know, I think like WhatsApp these days, you know, things like that. So um, what happened there was that um, yeah, the whole world heard about this um, because I went to Cuba on holiday about a month later after the riots. And I was, you know, working at that time uh, in the fire prevention office so we was working together with the police doing stuff and that, that my my manager you know was teaming up with the police dealing with you know joint kind of like fire safety and police issues in clubs and bars and stuff like that because they had to get a license but um so he was getting the uh information you know what was going on with the riots from the police as well but to cut a long story short because i'm digressing here um the politicians couldn't do much about it. It's going out of hand, you know? <laughs> and, uh, they said, all right, we're going to hire a ex New York uh, chief to facilitate, to actually, mm -hmm. you know, he's had experience of all this stuff, uh, to, to come into the UK for two years to work on all this yeah. problem. What was going on? Is that a kind of example? I mean, obviously the second of the, with, with the strikes with, with yeah. us, it, it kind of was a, more yeah. or less, you know, resolved in the end with someone intervening, but, yeah. So again, I don't know the, I, I wasn't close to the, the details of what happened in the UK. And, you know, these, these riots uh, and looting are terrible and yeah, yeah. in some ways, but I also want to point out at least uh, what somebody once said to me, what earlier, uh, earlier unrest in Brixton, this was back yeah. in the time I was living there. 1981. That, uh, you know, there's a, there's also this, this, uh, disruption or upheaval, uh, ha has also a good aspect just in the following sense that maybe in previous generations, people would think they just have to put up with conditions that are terrible. And the fact that they think, no, no, we also have rights and we're going to, um, make make our demands known is in a certain sense a sign of progress so um i'm not i'm not promoting uh, rioting and looting but the fact that more people these days uh think no no uh, they have to listen to us i'm not just going to do i'm not just going to take things the way they are even if they're crap for me yeah. is a is a positive sign and so uh, th th this is what I'm saying is that in more and more cases, people are demanding to be heard and demanding to be taken account of. And this is why we have to collaborate. We can't just force things. Yeah. Uh, and on the other hand, this tendency to, well, to hell with it, I'm going my own way, this polarization. And that's the, yeah, yeah. that's the, 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 the tension that I'm, that I'm dealing with. And yes, my, 
my argument is that the the way to deal with this tension, the way to to move forward together, notwithstanding uh, the important differences and disagreements amongst us, this is what requires facilitation. Yeah. I mean, um, you've got a good president, uh, Trudeau. Um, of, of, I hope so, anyway. So I'm sure he, he's kind of all for having that kind of discussion where he could sit with Trump on climate change, maybe, and sort of say, well, there was one one interview I saw him have uh, when they asked him uh, when Trump came out with a bar in his hand, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, when the, one of the riots, at, you know, yeah, yeah. demonstrations, actually. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the riot, it was a demonstration. And then he came at the bar and it got criticised all over the world for that. And then when I asked Trudeau, he said, well, what do you think of that? And he, he stayed quiet. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Trudeau has, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has his uh, strengths and his weaknesses. But I noticed, I remember that time. And what I, what I thought was important about it is Trudeau realised he didn't have the luxury of just saying to hell with Trump. It's a, another yeah. very good example, like your firehouse example. Yeah. Yes, they didn't agree on anything. They're political yeah. opposites, yes. but they're they they were leaders of countries that are next to each other, and so difficult or maybe even unpleasant as it was, uh, they had to find a way to work things through. And that's my my general point. Uh, yeah. We have to find a way to work things through, uh, even if we wished we could just have it our way. Anyway, excellent, excellent. I think that's about, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, no, we've spent a long time. We could go on forever, actually. <laughs> well, there's lots of examples, and the examples yeah, yeah. you're giving I, I can only really give my good. own one an analogy and then, yeah. you know, apply yeah. it to everywhere. It's more applied, really. So, uh, all right, well, look, no, that's, that's excellent. I'm really glad you come on the show and talk about it. Where, where can people, uh, okay, well, I've got one question I can pull out. Uh, what's one key idea you hope readers can take from your book? Well, the idea I want people to take from the book is that uh, it is possible. It is possible to move forward together, even with differences, with diversity and differences and disagreement. It can yeah. be done. It's not, it's not straightforward. It's not easy. It's not guaranteed, but it can be done. And this book uh, offers a way to offers a way to do that, which is what, why the title of the book is facilitating breakthrough, how to remove obstacles, bridge differences and move forward together. And yep. uh, I think the world needs more and better collaboration and therefore more and better facilitation. Certainly, as we've seen, in, and certainly from the UK's point of view in the last four years, uh, well, since 2016 with Brexit and then the coronavirus, there's a lot of uh, cases like that where you could, you know, put loads of uh, <laughs> examples where this can be, you know, your book can what we've spoken about today can be applied, but uh, we haven't got time. <laughs> okay. Uh, where can people find your book and find out more about you? Uh, well, the book's uh, available everywhere, uh, bookstores, Amazon, etc., uh, facilitating breakthrough, and uh, they can look at my website, adamkahane.com. Excellent. Great. Well, Adam, it's really been a great pleasure to having a chat with you about, about all this, because it's always good to have a kind of, me we call it mediators as well, but yeah. I suppose it's slightly different, but, you know, facilitators just actually making sure, you know, each side have their say in. It's like, is it like a referee? uh yeah it's but yeah. A re uh, it's not uh well it's sort of like a referee sort of like a mediator but yeah, it's yeah. the person who who helps people yeah helps people work together that's yeah it. we've got this program called Qu question charm which you probably know about anyway <laughs> so which yeah. is uh, it's uh, a different host now but it's a similar kind of thing isn't it really so facilitating like that right adam okay. great pleasure having you here anyway thanks, and Dave. thanks a lot for coming okay. and talking to my audience cheers that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Or head over to my website, davepalmer.com, and click on Rate Show. Well, that's all for now, but I'll see you in the next episode of The Dave Palmer Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.